Uh, I was wondering on the subject of um, painting cloth or just constructing cloth, um, if you had any uh, just ways of thinking about it or tips and tricks um, worth mentioning. Nope, I'm good. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Hold on. Let me uh, let me discuss. Um. So the way that I think about cloth is pretty simple. Um, imagine this is a sphere and when you drape cloth, you usually, it usually falls and lands on top of the surface and it has to, it like folds in, in itself, right? And so it creates these, these larger folds, you know? Gotcha. <laughs> you guys are the fire. Department. I live next to a fire station. There's a fire, a wildfire behind my some mountains near me. Anyway, and then you know you just kind of render them, and you just you know if light's coming from right, and this would all be in shadow, and it's a rounded, it's a rounded form. You know? Yeah, I gotcha. And then since it's spherical, so this would also have a spherical outlook too. And so then what I commonly see when people do folds, they'll just, they'll just, I don't even, yeah, they'll just, uh, they'll just draw some shapes and then just make it a fold, right? And they're not even thinking about how it fits on the actual form. So as long as you think of it uh, as a form, like 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 things on top of a form. So if you have a cylinder with let's say a thing popping out, okay, right. You know, and then you have this large cloth that you're going to drop on top of this form. It would essentially just, well, let's make it longer essentially fall on top of this, you know, there would be little ruffles here and there. And then as it goes over here, it would bunch up on this. Right? Yeah. And then drape off of this. See what I'm saying? You can might even have it bunch a little bit on top of that because it's, it might be pushing some of that up. But you still have the same the same stuff to worry about, which is that it's on a cylinder. So you throw under the cylinder. And then you do the folds within the, the cylinder. Cool. Hey, Josh. Something that I've heard that I found helpful too is like um, is that you can almost have the lines of the folds radiating out from like a point of tension so that's something too like if your character's like stretching in one way then the folds are sort of going to radiate from that pool on the cloth okay I got you nope wrong <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Yes. So whenever I uh, paint like a character, let's say it has an arm bending and they're wearing like a 
a shirt or something, then it's very much to what he was just saying, where you just, you find the point of tension, you just extrude from it. You know what I mean? But, I mean, all cloth is is just folded, like, like a really thin <sighs> piece of fabric that's draping or hanging off of a, of a, of a form. And you just got to figure out how it's draping off of that form and what form that it's draping off of. If it's stitched together or sewed together, there will still be folds because it still is connected and draping at some small micro level. All right. Yeah, thanks. All right. Key. All right. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I've got a question. Um, it's about when you're rendering uh, textures and materials. Do you do you start tackling them immediately, or do you slowly build them up? Uh, just not. Uh, I've just been experimenting with, I guess, different methods to get to the end and haven't found a good solution to tackling like the different materials of of the image. Give me an example. Uh, so if you're drawing a knight that's got, you know, obviously metal armor and maybe he's got a cape or something and he's got a wooden shield, would you start uh, rendering that kind of with a, when you're rendering form, um, would you would you render with the uh, like kind of more of a matte finish and just establishing lighting on a, a general like uh, kind of how you would see like let's say a like a Maya or something like a like a three D uh, AO render or something like that for Maya and then add textures on top of that or would you just kind of try to tackle it all at once? So the The answer to this question um, might not be one that you like or one okay. to hear. Sure. So if I don't know how to paint materials of a thing, then I won't be able to do it. So what you're implying um, is that is there a method better than another? But the reality is um, it doesn't matter if you don't know how to paint materials. Like if you start painting from materials, then what would you need to know? Like if you just start painting the forms, what would you need to know? So let's, let's do this first scenario. Like, let's say you see someone start painting and they start painting materials just straight up and it looks great and accurate almost immediately along with lighting and form. What, what can you assume from the scenario? That they, know how materials act in certain lights. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that's easily obtained or hard? <laughs> I would say pretty hard. Yeah. Now let's look at this the second scenario. Let's um, say there's a person who uh, needs to do the line art, then does a matte painting, and then applies the material. What would you assume from that? But yet they still uh, make amazing artwork too. And it's really impressive. So how do you how do you how do you feel that they would know or like what what is your sense uh about them about materials uh i still think they know their stuff they exactly. probably just they're probably just comfortable <clears throat> with a certain process so so that's coming to my point okay it doesn't matter right yeah there was a time where I started the first way that I explained, I'm not the one, the second way that I explained, the, the one I just talked about, where I started in stages. And there's times where I just go straight into painting and just fucking 
like hmm. balls to the wall type of thing you know yeah but all that matters um first is what can you uh, knowing knowing your stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah and then you can worry about which process do you prefer does it make sense so if you're having a hard time painting materials and you're focused on process then you're focused on the wrong thing now huh. what okay. may end up happening is when you study study and practice you actually may discover a process that you prefer right mm -hmm. Because you've tried painting materials straight from your, your gut, and it's extremely difficult, even after you've studied a lot. But then maybe you do the system where you do a sphere and do all this stuff, and you feel more comfortable there because you, for whatever reason, you feel more, you feel more free with a systematic way of approaching it. Or mm -hmm. flip the script, as you're doing your studies, you try a systematic approach, and it's just you feel super static and boring, right? Um, although you're getting great results. Uh, so then you try a more a looser approach, more aggressive approach. And guess what? You, you feel that that's much better. You feel a little bit more alive when you're painting. You understand? Hmm. But, but in both scenarios, one thing needs to remain true. Like one thing is a constant. You're like practicing your materials. Understand? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so the, the answer to that question is, um, don't worry so much about that. It's like asking how Usain Bolt trains and you haven't yet stepped outside to go run. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, like um, once you start running and, and you, you'll have more, a lot more um, uh, uh, useful, um, not more useful, but you just, you just become a little bit wiser. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. and the context matters but if i had to to give you the the benefits of either or the the benefits of um the first strategy which is being able just to uh, have a systematic approach is is you know obvious for obvious um reasons like uh if you can systematically control your painting then you have a lot of control over it it's it's non-destructive yeah yeah but if you are um painting freely and just doing the materials then there's advantage there because you can just kind of get right to the to the point you know so it's just a question matter of which you do you prefer uh and it it doesn't matter if it's hard at that point you see what i'm saying like because either one's gonna be fucking hard it doesn't matter <laughs> So you you just yeah. gotta you gotta just kind of sit where you feel like where you sit and and you could try both. That's actually one of the better ways to find out which one you prefer. Just try every different fucking process, you know. All right. And then and then try it. Really try it. Not like for only a minute and it sucks and you're ah oh, I, I guess this is not no like try it for like a month, you know, like really get in there and then you can like if you don't like it then it's fine. You have a lot more um uh, more high ground to quit, you know. But if you only try it for like 10 minutes, just, you don't have enough evidence to truly understand whether you like it or not. You're, 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 you're focused in on the, remember how I was talking about the biological problems of humans, you know, that are still in yeah. us today. That's what's happening when you, when you just kind of quit a little too soon, you know? I see. Yeah. That's why I you're say. Not, you're not really giving it a fair chance. Yeah, it really. Like I, I usually say, if you want to quit on something that you want to get good at, right? If you generally don't want to do it anymore, <coughs> then you better get paid doing it already. Hmm. Okay. Cause then that means you've actually tried and you're doing it and you're getting paid. Other people also think you're good at it, you know? And then if you say, you know, I don't like concept art, then I would say, okay, cool. You know? Yeah. Like you've made a very, like, or I don't like this type of art, whatever that may be. You made a strong case against it because you've really put the work in and tried it and you just discover you don't like it anymore. You know, which actually happens. I know people that are like that who, who are well, some of the best in, in the industry and they, they don't like concept art. And they went Interesting. and they've done other things. Like one of my friends, he sells gun parts. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But like, that's All what right. he loves. He loves that. You know, that's my, my, um, my, uh, 
anecdotal evidence for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the process that I prefer is just like, just straight up jump right into it. And which is really challenging. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. yeah, okay. But I have done the systematic approach specifically. Uh, if I know I'm going to make a lot of changes, like if I'm, I'm predicting that it's going to happen, you know, hmm. would it make it easier to do like iterations and stuff that way? Uh, with the systematic approach. Yeah. Yeah. Systematic approach is obvious. It's in its benefits, specifically the, the, like I just told you with the, um, the ability to, uh, what you call it. Um, it's just non-destructive, right? Mm -hmm. Super, super powerful. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Y'all? Yeah. I was wondering what's your opinion on fancy brasses, like texture brasses, if we should start searching for some? To make our process faster, you know. Uh, what, what, what was my feelings on texture brushes? Yeah. There and if go. it's a good idea to yeah, they're good. gather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a time where I used to think differently about brushes because people used to always ask, like, what brush are you using? And, uh, <laughs> and that's a very, very popular thing still. People always ask, like, what kind of tool you're using, whatever. And I've, I've come to realize that the tools do actually matter right mm -hmm. like it's easier to build a house with a, an array of power tools than it is to just build it with a hammer only you know <laughs> right yeah and so yeah, of course so it makes sense to to be investing in other tools and stuff like that and that's the way i see it with brushes like they're just tools just some tools are better than others so you just have to be the judge of that um i like using texture brushes um primarily to uh, speed up my paintings if I want them to feel like paintings. Uh, otherwise, I don't care. I usually just paint everything out. Mm -hmm. Or I'll just make my own brushes. Yeah, that's okay. usually how I feel about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because uh, I think texture brushes are really useful for like environmental painting because you have a lot of textures you have to involve in your, in, in your illustration or your, your drawing. So it makes sense to have brushes that already kind of get you halfway there. Oh, yeah. Sure. You know? Um, but other than that, yeah, I, um, I, I don't use them often. I used to use them a lot. Like, again, I said for fun. And there's a lot of good ones. I actually have a bunch on my site. Uh, I've re... Um, I've like restructured my um, my brushes, so I don't use anything other than my simple tool brush presets. But I, I realize I need to bring some of them back, some of the cool texture brushes. Let me see. Let me do that right now, actually. Okay. Let's see. Where is my brush presets? Let's replace these brushes. Nope. And then let's go to my. Dropbox, I think I have it here, tools, AJ second tools maybe, that's 2015, these are 2015 as well, so I don't know what the difference is, those were at 11 a.m., these, are, these ones are older, <laughs> okay, so I'll assume that these are the ones, yeah, look at all of them, they're back, they're back. And I think you can have access to this on my website under resources. I forget where I put that. There's a lot of good ones here. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Great, okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Okay, let's say, for example, my uh, like ultimate goal is to get to, let's say, Naughty Dog. And what do you think is the best tactic? Like, like I, for example, I try to get in there, I get rejected, then what shall I do? Should I, like, uh, okay, work a lot more and then delete everything I had from my portfolio and get, like, 10 new pictures and then wait half a year and write them again? Or what is the best way to, like... Yeah, that sounds about it? right. Just keep trying. Um, make, make friends and interact with people often. Like I said, the only things you can control and the only things you should ever worry about is the quality of your work and the mm -hmm. people that you know. Right? Because if you know some of the people there, then you can just write them directly, like I did. And if, if you have good work, then it makes it easy for them to suggest it to the team. Mm -hmm. You know? It's really that simple. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of schools that will explain away all these different things you need to do, right? You need to have a resume and a, and a cover letter and all this fancy stuff. And when it comes down to it, I think when, it, when they actually start to hire you, uh, they may ask for all these things after they've already kind of accepted you, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so then the reality is all they really care about then is are you qualified for the work? The best way to think about this is if you want to know if you think you're getting closer. I mean, I would say, yeah, I keep applying, you know. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, especially in the way that you suggested, you know, wait a little bit and then have new work to sh show them. It's completely reasonable, right? Because mm -hmm. they'll forget you. Like, as soon as they look at your, your really bad work that they don't like, uh, they'll forget about you <laughs> as soon as you uh, they close the email. <laughs> you, they, right? like, put you on the blacklist, like, never yeah. hires you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, one of my, that's one of my jokes that I actually used to tell because that students were just like, I'm afraid of putting my bad work out there because, you know, I don't want people to associate me with that. And it's like, there's not, like, a list going around. Like, it's not like if you apply for a job, it's like, yeah, like you said, and they're like, oh, my God, this person's so awful. Let's put them on the list. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Let's put them on the list and, and, and make sure, like, but, Jim, won't, won't they get good eventually? I mean, not every, no, everybody doesn't stay bad forever. No. I don't care. This work is so bad. I don't even care if they get better. I don't want to hire them ever. <laughs> that doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I mean, as soon as you hear me say it that way, you're just like, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Why would <laughs> Why, why am I so afraid of showing my, my shitty work? Um, because people will just forget about it. Like literally they will forget about it. You, you, you'll just have forgettable work. And then, and then when you sit to meet them uh, a year later and like, Oh my God, this is amazing. You know? Um, and, and then they give you a job, whatever. It's just, it's, all the other stuff was irrelevant. All that, all that matters then is that they, um, all that matters then is that you got some good feedback, right, from those people, and they gave you some really strong criticism, and now it's pushing you to a much better quality of work. You know, mm. um, that's the worst that can happen is that you just get rejected and then tell you why. And that's actually a good thing, you know, because yeah. you're you're not gonna get the job if you don't apply, right? You fail. Um, if you do the work, you'll fail some of the time, even most of the time. But if you don't, you'll fail every single time. You know? And so submitting work is, is valuable for that reason, that reason alone, just to get that feedback. I have a friend who's starting to do stand-up com comedy. And I'm watching him do it. I'm on, he's on Instagram. And he posts often his, his jokes. And uh, I've been watching him. I've actually been very proud of him. Because he's doing these jokes and some of them are pretty bad. But like, but that's how it is. You know, comedians, almost all of them that I've seen that talk about their their craft, they, they talk about how it's just you gotta like just tell the bad jokes for years until you start to learn how to tell good jokes. You know? It, yeah, it's just, you know, in my mind, like uh, I have this idea to find okay, someone online for, uh, who's currently working in there and be like, hey, could you please look at my portfolio and give me an advice about that? Or is it like, you know, 
too irritating. Like uh, I imagine many people ask them that and they oh. they get irritated because of that. Is it true? Like yeah. I'm overthinking it. <laughs> no, yeah, people definitely will get annoyed with that. That's fine. Just keep doing it anyway. Um, <laughs> just don't be annoying. But like if you are courteous and you go up to them and you're like, hey, you know, I want to really work for your company. Do you mind giving me feedback? Whatever. Um, the worst thing that can happen there is that they don't give you any feedback. Uh, if you pester them every five seconds, every day, you know, they're, <laughs> they're obviously going to react negatively to that. But if you just reach out to them periodically, monthly, or even like by month, like, or every two months, you know, uh, I don't mm -hmm. see why they would flip out on something like that, you know? Um, yeah. But that's why I say go to events because it makes it much easier. Because if you talk to people online, you know, you're just some random nobody. But if you go to, up to them and talk to them and they can see your face and, and see that you're enthusiastic, and it's a little bit different. Especially if you're really kind and you're not being rude and abrasive. You know? Just, yeah, of uh, course. Yeah, just be a, like a decent human being <laughs> in, in those situations. You should be all right. And the reason why I say that too is because in some circumstances you may run into somebody that will be entirely annoyed and treat you very poorly. That is not your fault. That is their problem now because you will probably think of it like, man, I thought that person was good. And now you'll have a much, much more harsher and more negative outlook on that person specifically, you know, and, yeah. and that's good to know because then one day you'll be epic. Cause I just, <laughs> Right, it's all temporary. You being bad, right? Well, you're not necessarily bad, but you get my point. You know, it's it's temporary from being where you guys are at right now, especially if you guys keep at your your work. You know, yeah. uh, if you can keep that consistency, that's, that's the only killer is the lack of consistency. But if you can keep it up, um, yeah, you can you can basically uh, surpass some of these people. You know. Mm -hmm. and and then and then they'll be reaching out to you i have a friend who um approached one of his idols and was talking to him and he treated him like uh like garbage he was like he's like man stop being such a fanboy so he this guy told him right and this is a pretty reputable artist and my friend was just like what <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and so then he um he walked away from that with a bad taste in his mouth ever since and then my friend started doing some really epic stuff and started doing these projects that got a lot of attention. Uh, and guess who came knocking? Mm -hmm. You know, this that artist. <laughs> yeah, the artist was like, oh man, your stuff's great. Like, I'd love to pick your brain and talk to you more about building uh, stories and stuff like that, you know? Oh, um, now you want to talk to me? And my friend was thinking too when that happened. He wanted so badly to be like, stop being a fanboy. <laughs> yeah, but but my friend's better than that. But he was telling me, he's like, oh, I should have done that, man. I wanted to so badly. I was like, nah, but you're the better man. You mm -hmm. know? He's like, yeah. Um, but you see my point? Like, it's really, yeah. really important to, to stay consistent with your behavior and then if, pay attention to people's, other people's consistency with their behavior. I'm always sweet to people, so no problem. <laughs> I, I don't know. I heard Russians, they're not a sweet people, so I already don't trust you. You know, I after this class, I'm going to make the blacklist. I know it doesn't exist, but I'm going to make it. Now. Oh, you. Yeah, and you're in the first name that's going to go there, so <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, I mean, okay. that's that's what I'm trying to get at, like, uh, be sweet to people <laughs> and be nice now there, there will there is like i remember we used, we talked about this type of stuff in the beginning of the class about um you know uh, female artists in industry yeah Ugh, i'm a big fan of, of the increasing number you know and uh, uh -huh. but but it doesn't change the fact that there are people out there that are pervs okay so keep an eye out for that <laughs> all right like there 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 are guys that will will approach you to push a, a, a more uh 
And I don't think like in an aggressive way, right? I think it'll be innocent, but just be uh, attentive to that. My, <laughs> like, my, can you like, please review my portfolio, send news or get the phone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's super innocent. No, that's not innocent. But you know what I mean? Like, um, you, that's why I always tell my female students, and it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing, but I think it's helpful. And I would say the same would be true for male students, right? Um, is just to so, send your work first, put your first work ahead of you. You know what I mean? And in the circumstances of meeting people in person, it's it's very um, it's very important that you put your work in front of people. But but don't think that just because um, you you are a lady too, and there might be, there might be a perv art director that they'll give you a job if you're not qualified. That still doesn't happen. At least not that I've seen. Right. <laughs> um, but I have seen, uh, because there's like, there's so li little, like little <laughs> of female artists, right? Like there's just so, there's not so many of them. I, I've worked in many different studios and very few exist. I mean, even right now when I sent the stuff that, uh, from my student Yellum, right? Mm -hmm. um, my friend's like, oh man, this guy, this works great. Like send, tell him to send me um, his portfolio. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how it should be. He did, he just assumed it was a dude, right? Not to say that he's sexist and he's like, oh, only dudes can draw good. He just assumed because most people who submit our concept artists are dudes at the moment. At the moment. Right? Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, it's a it's a it's a female. And he's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, let her know. You know, it didn't change. He just he was like, Oh, wait, wait, well. Send me her she's photo. Got a first. Vagina. <laughs> let me see her yeah, let me see your photo. No, like it wasn't like that at all. He just he he just assumed wrong, and I just corrected him, and then it was it. And then like, end of conversation. I was like, "See, the patriarchy it exists." You know, <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. He just didn't know, because how could he have known? He just saw the work; it was good. He said, "Send me her or send me his stuff." I said, "You mean her?" And he's, like, "Oh yeah, send me I mean, her stuff." Yeah. And then that was it. That was it. And then, uh, and I think that's really valuable. Because there was this one artist I, uh, I, I talked to at ISCC, and she's very, very attractive. Like, very, very beautiful, you know? Uh -huh. And I told her, I was like, you have to, like, I don't want to come off wrong, but you have to understand that that could be something that you need to be concerned about, okay? Because some dudes um, are going to be uh, thinking um, wrong about their agenda, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you have to, I think in, in, in my uh, honest opinion, you have to try to put your work in front first because you want to be hired on the merits of your work. You know, you don't want to be swayed in any other way. And she understood. She agreed. She was like, yeah, I get that. And I was like, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't want you to be underplayed or overplayed. Cause I've had friends who, um, uh, there was this one girl, she became, she was a producer because, uh, she was just super attractive. She had no qual qualifications and she had no, another thing and she got the job because this guy just kind of wanted to have her there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't think he thought that too. I don't think he was actively trying to be weird about it. He just was like, oh man, you know, yeah, you're great. Let's get you in here, you know? And he was just kind of like, oh man, she's hot, you know? And then she just did a terrible job and she was like freaking out, you know? Because she just wasn't qualified. And then, uh, and then, like, then there was this weird, like, um, it got really bad. And then because, like, because she had no interest in the person that was bringing her in, you know? She just thought she got it because she had a good job, right? She did a good work. The guy had, like, an agenda. Again, I don't think he was actively thinking, like, I'm going to get her a job and I'm going to get in her pants. Like, I don't think he was thinking that maliciously. He was just, like, he was just kind of blinded, you know, a little bit. And then, you know, they were building a friendship because she you knows she thought this guy was really nice and he helped her out and all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? And then, and then what ended up happening was that she started building a relationship with one of her other coworkers. Uh -huh. And then this guy all of a sudden flipped his attitude towards her. You see where I'm going? And I'm like, that's, that's kind of bullshit. And I remember talking to her about it. And she's just like, I don't know, how do I like navigate this? And I was like, fucking, like, brush up your resume put your work in front of you and then take another job somewhere else and that way you can still date your this dude right and not deal with the fucking weird politics drama that has brewed because of people's misjudgment you know 
Yeah, yeah that was uh, what's pretty happened to me when I applied for the journalist job. Like I sent the boss a letter uh, telling that I really love video games and like writing about them, la la la. But I didn't send any of my texts because I was, you know, young and silly. And <laughs> he was like, uh, he obviously saw my photo on the Google, you know, mail. Yeah. <laughs> and he replied me because of that he t took me to the job and after that he was like oh you're you're actually writing some good texts <laughs> that's a nice bonus <laughs> I'm, I'm like what <laughs> yeah, I, I mean yeah. like listen i think those types of situations they might not be great but at least i think they're innocent enough you just got to be all i'm saying and this is specifically to the female artist um let's just be a little bit cautious that's all right um, yeah, there was an incident at uh, one of these events that I went to where someone genuinely was sexually harassing somebody, and we all, me and a few guys, approached this gentleman pretty firmly and let him know that that was not appropriate. Like this girl, this poor girl, she thought that she was like, you know, I didn't want to upset him because you know he works for Marvel and he does all this amazing stuff, and <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, but guys aren't supposed to go up to you and start grabbing your 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 chest just because they work for Marvel, like. I worked for Blizzard. You see me running around, <laughs> grabbing, you know, these female artists' chests just, and like groping them and like molesting them. Like no, because it's fucking wrong. <laughs> you know, like, and I, I remember telling her, "Is like, you know, th there's a really strong point to be made here. Uh, you can be a good artist and an asshole too. That's possible. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, being a good artist doesn't all of a sudden make you a nicer person. If you're a jack off before, you're gonna be a jack off that can paint well, you know. And mm -hmm. so I told her that, and then she she started crying and felt really bad. And but we we made it very clear to her that she um, should not let that happen again and say something like people will be on her side. And I was like, man, I've never experienced that. You hear it in movies, right? Like you see it in movies where like these. So why don't these girls just tell people, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, she didn't. She just she was so fucking afraid, you know? And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like to me, it's just like, duh, fucking rat them out. Let's burn them, you know? But like, she, I guess she just just didn't know how to handle it. She didn't want to like upset the art gods, whatever, I'm you know? Really surprised that such things happen in America. Like you guys, uh, like are What's so against. <laughs> Yeah, like. Yeah, because we uh we we um one thing I think it is is that we uh over, um, we we oversensify or put a a lot of emphasis on sex being a taboo. Mm -hmm. Because it is, and people like are super they hold a lot of these repressions in. If that makes sense, I think it's not unique to the America. I think everywhere has it, right? But but for instance, like like uh, alcohol is a good example. Like you you have in these other countries where drinking is kind of like whatever you know like you have kids drinking when they're like 12 and yeah but it's <laughs> super but it's super casual and usually the parents are usually around you know and and then these kids just grow up thinking yeah it's just alcohol is whatever you know but in america it's like it's taboo like if you don't like if you, if you don't drink you know it's crazy and then and, and then it's like hidden and you have to keep it secret from your parents and all this crazy stuff right and then by the time you're 21 then you're like time to rage and because in america it's like a sport to drink so mm -hmm. excessively you know yeah no. and, <laughs> yeah and and uh, talking to a russian <laughs> yeah and so um we've 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 perfected the art of belligerence and and um and it's super taboo and you have people over consume because they just like are trying to let loose. Like I have my son, he's 20 now. And I've actually told him to basically like, if he needs a ride, I'll go pick him up. So I can't stop you from doing stuff, you know, mm -hmm. you know, that's what's, that's part of the responsibility of growing up and, and being, becoming an adult. And I told him, I was like, you know, if you find yourself like super like wasted or you you just don't want to, like, you know, it's dangerous, right? Or you just don't want to drive. Like, I'll come pick you up, no judgment. In fact, I, I'd be very proud and very happy if you let me knew, like know what was going on and you needed some help, right? And he, he's like, okay, cool. He's like, yeah, but you can drink. I'm like, I don't care. Just do it in, in a closed and safe environment, you know? 
don't let your friends drink and drive, you know? And sure enough, that's what he did. He, he like, one of his kid, uh, his friends, he grabbed his keys and, like, threw it, like, uh, somewhere. And he's like, you're not driving. Because his friend was, like, super drunk. Uh, and then he he bought him a lift. And he, they took a, a lift back to the other friend's house where mm-hmm. they, they crashed. And he told me that. And I was like, yeah, that's because you're a responsible individual. <laughs> you know? I was like, you yeah. can have fun. Just be fucking responsible. There's a reason why they tell people not to drink and drive. Yeah, no no need to sacrifice your life for, yeah. the, for yeah. that. And, and no reason for me to be like, if you drink, you're fucking blasphemy. You know, it's, it's, it's overreaction. Uh, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, so getting back to kind of the question then, right? Like quality of work and the people you know, really focus in on that. Um, and, and yeah, and generally, because um, I don't think dudes have this problem as much, right? I don't think like, uh, I think when the tides turn, when you have more female um, artists or female leads and uh, or just like more diverse groups, then you could probably see this problem happen on all, both sides of the spectrum. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, because, you know, people, people think other people are hot. It's hard to hide that. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's yeah. really hard. It's really hard. Even like, it's not just a, a, a dude thing. Females do the same thing. Right. Yeah. It's like the, I know some people that are in uh some dudes that are in nursing or education and it's like <laughs> kind of the same for them where like there's yeah, all these they're getting sexual out. harassed by the, the, the overwhelming female well not like sexual harassment oh, but they yeah, are. Just that, that subtle <laughs> that subtle <laughs> yeah because you can't avoid it it's, a, it's our biology man we want to get into each other's pants you know and so we, sometimes we overlook things uh, to no fault of our own and it's only it's the actions that speak, right? If you, if, like I said, it's innocent enough. If people are just like, man, that dude's hot or this chick's hot, um, that's fine. Cat calling at work, I think, is inappropriate, obviously. You can't be just saying shit like that in front of people, other professionals. It's, in, it's inappropriate, you know? But if you find that, um, you know, it's, you have more charm talking to one other person just because, you know, there is some sense of attraction there. That's, this just happens. You can't avoid it. I remember. Um, uh, I remember I was at a gay club once with my friend. He, <laughs> he never went to a gay club, and I was like, "What? You're gay though?" And he's like, "Yeah, what the hell? I don't know." And he's like afraid because he was just coming out. And I was like, "Let's go, man." And I was like, "I've been to a few, right?" And he's like, "All right, let's go." And I took him, and um, we went to a place that's called Tiger Heat. Uh, I don't like it at all, man. It's uh, <laughs> not because it's a bunch of gay people dancing everywhere. It's because like the the handrails were covered with semen, like it was like what? it was real gay. <laughs> yeah, it was real bad. And Ew. I was like, "Oh man, this is gross." He was having a blast. He's like in the middle, just having some sort of weird like <laughs> rave orgy. He was he loved it. And uh, but I was like, you know, I was enjoying myself because he was enjoying himself. But I just this is filthy. And then uh, I remember some guy came up to me and he's like, "Hey, let me buy you some drinks." And I was like, "Bro." <laughs> buy me drinks i, I was never had it before <laughs> and i was like i was like yeah sure and i but i was like but listen man you know uh i'm not gay so if you're buying this you know it's just because you'd be my friend and then and he was laughing and he's like and we were both laughing and he's like okay we'll see we'll see and i was like what i was like all right challenge accepted keep buying me drinks see if you can get me drunk and then we had sex <laughs> just kidding <laughs> uh, you no. are the best <laughs> yeah, yeah. no it, it was fine he bought me like three or four drinks and then we had a good time it was a lot of fun and i introduced him to my my friend and then it was it was funny but uh, i was just like it never happened to me ever it was like the weirdest ex- situation uh, and, and yeah i was able to dance with girls right? and i didn't get creeped the fuck out right it was, it was cool because like they were like oh yeah that's fine you're probably gay and i'm like yeah probably you know and i was able to dance with them and it was just fun and i wasn't being treated like a creep or some person that wanted to you know it was nice um and i was like i actually kind of like gay clubs better than the straight clubs and uh and so me and my friend went to a lot of them a lot when we were in our early 20s and yeah i loved it better because every time i went to a, a straight club like there would just be fights all the time women would never want to like talk to me <laughs> even if i was just like wanted to dance with them right and just hang out they're just like get out of here weirdo 
you know? And I'm like, oh, man. And, but at the gay, uh, the gay club, it was never like that. It was a little bit more, uh, what is, what's the word? Fruitful, right? But I never hooked up or anything either. It was just, it was just I like to dance. And so. I wish there were, was a gay club in Moscow. Oh. <laughs> it would be set on fire and it would be. Yeah. Uh, it would be Probably. really bad. Uh, not because uh, gay people are bad. It's because people don't like gay people, right? There. Or I'm sorry, the people in Russia are still really violently doing shit to them. Yeah, well, one day you'll get out and then you can enjoy gay clubs elsewhere. <laughs> but, uh, or maybe your country will get their shit together in terms of that and fix it. Well, Putin is going to be the next president for like oh, yeah, of course. Six, four more years and it is just like i'm out of here man i want to run from here <laughs> so again my advice to to you is quality work and mm -hmm. uh, and uh making lots of meaningful relationships with people okay and i really mean yeah. the meaningful part uh, like don't network make friends that's the best way to think about it yeah i know that uh, female artist from naughty dog her name is ashley Svidovsky. oh yeah, that's right I would love to message her about that. I think she's a sweet person as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I think on average, it's, you know, there's not a lot of malicious intent, but there is a very, there is a very clear, um, there's a very clear contrast to the amount of men versus women in yeah. the industry. I just don't think it's it's for sexist reasons. I think it's no. I think it's cultural. We, yeah, women just don't want to do concept art. In general <laughs> like right now yeah i think that's changing i think more, more and more people are getting access to information uh, yeah. I, I think more and more uh like this idea that this is a job and career more and more because i'm having more female students like i've mentioned this before mm -hmm. it's, it's clearly right. advancing and i think that's great that's cute. like who wants to play video games right it's like for a long time it was just dudes that were playing video games that's true and it's like, why would you want to work on something if you don't even care about it? Right? Yeah, my, my wife doesn't play video games. Well, that's, that's what she claims. But then she plays games like Candy Crush and um, she loves Mario and all these things. And I explained to her, it's like, everybody plays video games. You just don't realize you're playing. When you think video games, you think in Call of Duty and all these things. Like, no, there's, there's, all, there's all sorts of games for every sort of person, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it's like, yeah, to your point, I think more and more uh people are playing games in general right <clears throat> and then like right now I, I saw a statistic that showed that like um the majority of uh users when it comes to gender is female right now there's more female gamers than there is male it's just that when we think of video games generally like we think of like the big ones like i was just talked about like call of duty destiny these types of games right Mm -hmm. but there's all those little small Facebook games and there's all those like mobile games. You know what I mean? These are highly popular um, and really huge. So the industry will, will definitely show some sort of paradigm shift because these games are also killing it. They're like extremely uh, epic in terms of revenue. I think like Supercell is making more money than Blizzard is. <laughs> they only have like, they have these mobile games, you know? And so um, my point is, is that it's, I think that's the natural transition. Uh, I don't think there's a patriarchy or the Illuminati holding people down. <laughs> you know, I think it's just natural. This is a natural um, evolution. And I'm a big fan of kind of what Netflix has been doing has been just empowering more female artists to make movies and TV shows and to be directors. You know, uh, I think that's the better solution instead of just like um to be just blatantly calling people sexist <laughs> even though even though it's not true yeah so that was my advice good luck i believe in you yeah your work's Thank actually you. pretty good man man like i said i i'm uh i focus on the quality of the work so it's good and like yellum like you saw her work it's really amazing and so there's there's um very obvious reasons why I'm, it's easy for me to send her stuff you know, you just got to make it just as easy for me if you guys want me to send your stuff to people eventually. I've done it already for students that in the past that they they um, didn't take my class for a while and then they showed me their stuff and I was like, oh man, you got great. And then I shared it, you know, 
because maybe someday you'll want to share my work. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I might not be, I might not care that you, that you're female, but I do care you're Russian. So sorry. Oh. So I don't help Russians. Communists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> communists. I don't help the communists. Yeah, of course. And this is true for all of y'all. You just get good. Don't worry about anything else. Just be good and make friends, yo. All right. Thank you so much. You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Anybody else have any other questions? I got a question. Yeah. My YouTube I'll question. A question here. Um, what was a one of your favorite or most notable um, works that you've done for a game or studio or something? Oh, Starcraft, for sure. It's like my favorite, at least. And the stuff I did for God of War. Um, but to Monica, yes, I'll answer that question in just a second. Um, yeah, when I was working uh, at Blizzard, I did StarCraft, and that was my favorite. Uh, and I, it's it's a big deal, StarCraft, Legacy yeah. of the Void. And then God of War, Sony Santa Monica, that was probably, again, one of my favorite, most notable works. But uh, I'm actually more known for just my my own work nowadays, which is great, and teaching. And that's what I prefer. But it took some time. It took some time to get there. You know, oh, yeah, and um, I'm still working on uh, finding ways to uh, make myself even better um, and known for my stuff in different ways, but yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. I mean, oh, that's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I, I worked on some movies and some big ones too, uh, like Warcraft movie, but I don't really, um. It wasn't as fun as like Legacy of the Void in, or God of War. Gotcha. Yeah. Like, I don't know too many people that just like love like their work to no end. Uh, I know people who like enjoy it and they, they love it for the day by day, but like, you know, very rarely do I know someone that just like they, they need it every second you know yeah and so for me it was the same thing I, i'm not one of those people that every project that i work on i loved uh, it was only a few which was starcraft and god of war yeah, i'm gonna uh, go stop you now <laughs> see that's what you're not supposed to do natalie that's a good example of the patriarchy right there just so you know so now we have a good example <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm outside your window yeah I knew it. I'm on the third floor, so it's really weird. How are you? I got oh. long legs, man. <laughs> Slender man, all right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. But cool, thank you. Yeah. And uh yeah, what was your YouTube question again? I forgot. Monica. Oh, sorry, I'm really bad at muting and unmuting. <laughs> it's all right. Um, yeah, last week I asked um I want I I think I told you this last time. I wanted to start a big massive personal challenge that included making youtube videos mm -hmm. and uh a part of me is really worried about doing it because i mean i know i'm probably not going to get anyone viewing it but still i'm like worried i'm going to get targeted by trolls or something what was specifically are you afraid that they're going to target you for and yes you will be because trolls live everywhere yo <laughs> about that man they're gonna be everywhere but what's specifically are you afraid they're going to troll you for i guess part of it is um i want to do like a process series uh and i i'm worried that i'm gonna get a lot of shit for being you know a nobody who's not really done anything <laughs> well there's already a lot of uh uh really popular youtubers that are d that do that that's in fact kind of the main point of YouTube is to take a bunch of nobodies that have a bunch of good skills or something to, to offer, right? And they, um, they then become somebody because of that, right? You know? Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually the, the, the opposite is true is what I'm trying to get at is that you can become somebody on YouTube even if you had no credentials before. I assure you there's plenty of artists on YouTube who've never truly worked for a client, you know, um, and make tremendous 
uh, or quality content that people enjoy. You know, like uh, there's this guy. Uh, I, I'm sure that he doesn't do many things. Other, uh, now he is, but like Jaza, I think that's his name. Right? Like oh like yeah, a, draws with Jaza. Yeah, like he's probably a good example. Meaning that I don't think that he's. Uh, like, I don't think he worked before he did these videos. Hold on just a second. Let me answer this real quick. Hey, Monica. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm here. <laughs> hey, if you do your YouTube thing, share it with us. Because I would be interested. I've actually been thinking about, like, just putting stuff on YouTube any as well. Just to, I don't know, make it so that you have something kind of driving you. Like an outside force that kind of says, hey, you got to do this thing. Yeah, I was hoping to use it as sort of like an accountability tool for my own personal challenges. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, I'm back. Um, my wife needs me to, to bring some stuff. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like Draw with Jaza is a good example. Like, I don't think he had like a professional career before. You know, and if he did, it was very small stuff, right? I don't think he was like a well known animator right i could be wrong but i'm assuming this that's true um, monica monica <laughs> do you know what i will now upload a video now well <laughs> okay so just do it oh snaps <laughs> calling you out monica <laughs> upload it also um not uploaded but um yeah uh made it made it how is it called public yeah <laughs> Uh oh, you know what? Mm. I think I think that's sexual harassment. <laughs> I think Natalie is trying to see. This is what I was trying to warn you, girl. Look at oh, that. Yeah, God. <laughs> Monica, be careful about this Natalie girl. She might have an agenda. I've never witnessed this though <laughs> <laughs> before. Yeah. Well, she said she wanted to leave Russia. Oh, marriage, oh. Russian brides, import. All right. All right, if that I'm will sorry. get me out of Russia, then I'm in. Like, <laughs> all right. Sure. Yeah, that's so funny. Um, anyway, <laughs> mail-in bride, Russian mail-in bride. Like that is a thing, yeah, isn't it? Fast. I know nothing about. I know nothing about Russian, other than Putin, and that they don't like gay people. They punch them in the face. I mainly um, know the memes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway um yeah just just do it man that's kind of my point right like uh i mean don't get me wrong like it, it, you know someone like feng Zhu who actually has street cred and all that stuff it, it helps right but i think like someone like ross is another good example right ross like worked on i think echo or something like that. he worked on some smaller projects you know films but it wasn't like you know glorious you know nothing like uh yeah, I mean, Scott he did Robertson even this graduation video on YouTube, like, after he had YouTube channel, his YouTube channel. Yeah. And he just graduated graduated from Art Center, and, yeah, he had YouTube already, so. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say is, um, just do it, homie. There's there's enough room for all of all this extra content. You just got to commit. That's all it is. Yeah, I know. Okay. If you have questions, you can ask me as well, Monica. Sure. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Stay out of this, Natalie. You creep. Ah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Natalie. Monica. Stop, <laughs> <laughs> Stop hitting on the students. Jeez. <laughs> God, the patriarchy all over the place. Um, <laughs> I, I actually have to get out of here anyway um, because I need to get stuff from my wife right now and meet her at the school. But do you guys have any final questions, like any last Things you want me to answer quickly? No. All right. You speak for everyone then, yeah? Got it. <laughs> all right. Cool. I um, uh, appreciate all you guys' work, all the great questions, great discussion as always. Hopefully, you guys you learned a lot today and uh, work very, very hard this weekend or as hard as you can. Um, because this will be leading to the final week. The final week, we don't have as much time to really give you feedback and work because this will be the last week, right? So whatever you do this weekend will be the last time you have a long stretch of time. I actually do give everybody one more week after to submit to me 
the last rigid revisions, but there's no class or anything officially. It's just, you go to Discord, message me, and I look at it, give you the last feedback, and then send you out into the world. But we'll talk about that more next week. But in the meanwhile, um, hang out, keep working, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Later. All right. See you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.